Hi everyone! Welcome to part 2 of the Fabric Adaptive Music Tutorial. In the first part I showed you how to add Fabric to a Unity project and how to trigger a music loop from Unity GUI or from a custom script. In part 2 I'm going to show you how to make the music interactive and how we can test and tweak the audio mix and behaviors in real time. So if you remember, in part 1 we created a timeline with one audio layer, which plays the exploration loop. Now we need to somehow tell this timeline to turn on the combat loop when the player is in combat. So for that we're going to create a new parameter. Let's call it combat. Now we're going to add another layer to the timeline, also called combat. This layer will play the combat music loop and it will be in sync with the exploration loop, but it will only fade in when the player is in combat. So same as before, create a new layer and place a region in it. Now we're going to drive the volume of this layer based on the combat parameter. So right click in the properties box, click add property, uh, make sure it's set to volume and assign the combat parameter to it. This green line shows how the selected property reacts uh, to the given parameter. So as you can see, when combat parameter is zero, which is the far left point, the volume is minus 96 dB, basically muted. On the right edge, when the combat parameter is set to 1, the volume is set to 0 dB, so basically the original level of your music loop. You have some options here to add points to the line or choose the curve type. So there's a lot of room here to tweak it as needed. Last but not least, let's add an actual audio component to our region. Name it. and attach our music loop to it. Then just make sure to check loop. At this point we are ready to test how the combat parameter is working in the timeline and how it is going to affect the music. This is actually much easier to do when you have two screens, but I did my best to arrange everything on one screen so you can see how it all works together. This is the fabric timeline window. Make sure you have the actual timeline object selected in a hierarchy, otherwise the timeline window will be empty. This is the object inspector, our project browser, and a tiny little gameplay window. Ok, so let's play test it and see how the combat parameter works. As you can see, the combat parameter is visible in the inspector and we can manually drag and adjust it for testing. In the timeline window, you can also see the blue line moving left to right from 0 to 1. That line also represents the combat parameter. And you can also manually adjust it here. And as I'm demonstrating, it can be kind of hard to click it sometimes. But you can always use the inspector slider. Ok, that was cool. Now, instead of manually adjusting the combat parameter, let's add some code to control it from the game. I added some more code to our audio manager script, and I will actually go ahead and put this file on my website and make it available for download. So you can check it out and see exactly what it does. But I'll do a brief overview here. I added a new function called player attacked. In this function, I set an eternal flag is combat active to true, and also reset the attack timer, which I will explain in a minute. Update is a built-in function inside Unity, and it gets called on every frame. So in each frame we check if the combat is currently active. And if it is, we are calling the music event and telling it to set the combat parameter to 1. If you remember, our gameplay music timeline is listening to the music event, so this is how we communicate with it. We are also incrementing the combat timer since the last attack. Then we're checking if the time since the last attack has been longer than combat timeout, which is defined as 3 seconds at the top of this file. And if it is, we essentially turn off the combat. We call in the music event and tell it to set the combat parameter to 0. You're probably wondering what is the reason for this 3 second combat timeout. Let's say we didn't have it in place. This is what would happen. Enemy attacks, combat music turns on, enemy is killed, combat music turns off immediately. Now, if there was another enemy that showed up just a second later, combat music turns back on, enemy is killed, combat music turns off. So the experience of music going in and out would be very quick and drastic. These three seconds are sort of a cool-off period 
uh, which give a chance to kind of glue multiple enemy attacks together. Last but not least, I added one line of code to the start function, so that when a game starts, the combat parameter will be reset to zero. Now, one note about the function player attacked. When this function is called, will actually be very specific to each individual game. It is important to call it at the right times, when it's not too early and not too late. For that, you will likely have to play around quite a bit and do some testing. And I'm sure we've all played at least one game that gets it wrong. And that can be super distracting and just really takes you out of the experience. Well, in any case, after digging around in the code for Angry Bots, uh, I decided that it's best to call this function from the enemy objects. Each enemy object has a basic AI, so at some point the enemy quote-unquote notices the player. And that's what I'm calling this function. This seems to be working okay for this game because it's so fast-paced. But again, this will be very individual to each game. So if you're interested in trying this with Angry Bots, here are the files and line numbers where I'm calling the player attacked function. Now we're ready to test. So you can see that when an enemy attacks, the combat parameter jumps to one and the combat music starts playing. This works okay, but still not great. You can probably hear that the transition is really drastic right now. And this is where I think Fabric really shines. I don't need to stop playing the game to tweak my implementation a little bit. I'm going to go ahead and adjust the seek value on the combat parameter. Seek determines how fast the parameter value is changed. So if the combat is currently 0 and I tell it to change to 1, it will actually go through the gradual transition from 0 to 1 which will also gradually change the volume of the combat loop, as defined by our green line, so it will fade in and out more smoothly. Yes, this is working much better. However, there is one important thing to remember. Any changes that you make in playtest mode will not be saved. So you can test and tweak until you find the values that you are happy with, but when you stop the playtest, you need to go and enter those values again. And this is how Unity works in general, and not specifically a fabric limitation. The last piece I wanted to add is the one-shot stingers, which will play any time a combat starts. If you remember, any time we want a sound to play, we need to create an event for it. So I'll go ahead and create an event called combat slash start. And one neat little trick about fabric is that you can use slashes in your event names, uh, which will organize them into submenus. You will see what I mean in a minute. Next, I'm going to add another fabric component to our music group, this time a random component. And we'll name it Combat Stinger. You can click the little lock icon at the top of the inspector. This will keep the inspector in view even when you click on different objects and files. That way you can browse the project to your sound files and then just drag and drop them into the green area. This will automatically create audio components for each of my sounds. Keep the play mode as random, and you can also tweak the weight of each sound, meaning how often it will play. Then of course we should add the event listener, otherwise this will never get triggered. And this is what I meant when I was talking about submenus. You can see that start is visually nested on the combat event. This can be very helpful when you start dealing with dozens or even hundreds of events. For example, you could have a group for player events walk, run, jump, die, and so on. Now we just need to add a couple of lines to our script. So when the player is attacked, if combat is not already active, then tell Fabric to post event called combat start, which will in turn trigger our stingers. Okay, let's play test again. Cool, I can hear my stinger. But now I'm thinking that I only have two stingers, so it may get kind of boring and not really random. So here again, we can tweak some things right in the middle of playtesting. Let's tell our combat stinger component to randomize the pitch and make it plus minus, oh, I don't know, six semitones. So now our stingers are playing at random pitches. This is probably not super useful for musical elements, but of course a very common technique for sound design. 
And of course it's great to be able to test different parameters during gameplay, because you can actually hear them against all the other sounds that are happening. Well, I think this just about covers it. Now you know how to use a basic layered technique to create adaptive music in Unity using Fabric. Of course, Fabric has many other useful components and you can do a lot with various techniques. Uh, this is just a very brief overview to get you started. And as I mentioned, the audio manager script is available for download on my website, so feel free to download it and use it as you wish. And I will put that link in the description. And as always, thanks for watching, hope this was helpful. And if you have any questions, you can leave me a comment, tweet at me, email me, and I will try to answer the best I can. And you can find more about me and my music on my website, AnastasiaDivana.com. Alright, take care.